In this video tutorial, we're going to create a simple lower third graphic. So, let's see, I have my uh, blank scene here. I'm going to start adding objects to the scene. So, let's go ahead and first add a group to the scene by clicking the group button here at the top of the object manager. And let's re rename that to group lower third. Now, let's add a quad by going into the primitives list and click on the quad. A quad is added to the main viewport and we could actually in the object manager take this quad and drag it up to highlight the group lower third and let go and it becomes a child of the group lower third. So if I were to hide the group lower third now it hides the quad as well which is a child. All right. Let's rename the quad. Right click rename to BG for background. And we'll change in the first tab, the quad tab here, we'll change the width Let's just say 9, uh, 950, 100. And we'll bring that down into position using the control key. So click control and click and drag the object into position. I'm leaving space on the right hand side because we're going to do a bug graphic later on in another video tutorial. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space there to facilitate that graphic. And let's go in the materials tab, control M. And we're going to use this material as a texture, but let's just go ahead and create a new one from scratch. So new, I'm going to use, choose an image and then choose one, choose any basic image or you can use a material to attach to this um, background. I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, background red grad and attach that to my lower third. So select the lower third, the quad, in the material manager, double click on the material and it'll attach itself to the quad. Now what we need is a text object, a headline text object. So let's go ahead back into our object library and click on text. And let's start writing some text here. So headline text goes here. Using the control key, I'm going to click and drag it down into position. And let's, in the object manager, let's drag this text to object into the lower third. And rename it to headline. The first tab is scene fonts. Let's go ahead and just modify this font style. I'm going to put it to impact. And let's change the small caps to say 70. And that's good. Let's just bring it down the Y axis a little bit. So that's going to be the headline. Now I want to put a max size on this text. So I'm going to just go in this text object and start putting a whole bunch of characters in there. And this is going to be as far as I want this text object to to be. So I'm going to go into the tabs and options. I'm going to click the set to current button and it's going to calculate the width of the text object as it is right now. And it calculates it to be about 865 pixels. Then I'm going to enable this auto squeeze. And now if you keep typing in there, it starts auto-squeezing, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to get rid of all these extra characters. And then what we're going to do in the object manager, we're going to copy and paste this text object to create the subline. So I'm going to right-click, go copy, right-click, and go paste. Or you can go Control-C, v, control C, control v. I'll rename the headline 2 to a subline. Go into the Transform tab, and on the Position Y axis, bring it down. We're going to use a different font style, so I'm going to go into the font, scene fonts and I'm going to right click this font style and go duplicate, then right click again and go rename, rename it to headline, to subline. And let's change the uh, font style on this text object. So what you have to do to change the font style is to click inside of the text object in the viewport press control A to select all the text, and then double click on the font style in the stock category, and it moves up into the used cat category because it's now attached to this subline text. And now we can just go ahead and change this font style. And we'll change the properties to be no caps. We'll change the size, make the size a little bit smaller. And we'll change the contents to say subline text. And I'll just fine tune the position a little bit. 
it already has the max size from the previous. So let's just see how far it goes. Yeah, it's still good. Good. So you have your graphic. And it actually, let's rename this scene to lower third. Now, if we were to go into the sequencer, if you press F4, or just click the sequencer button here at the top, drag it into the sequencer, you can see here at the bottom that we already have our headline and sub subline text exposed. That's because by default, all text objects are exposed so that it can be changed on the output on the operator side. So we can go ahead and change this text here. Change the subline. You can actually see a, a preview of what it's going to look like on air. So if I were to execute this, if I click in the empty space under the state column, it, it will take it out to the virtual frame buffer. And this is what it's going to look like. That's what your graphics is going to look like. Now let's add to this. Let's start animating this lower third. Go back into the layout or press F3. So in order to animate this guy, we're going to be starting with the quad. We're going to animate the quad on and then fade the and fade the two text on. So to animate the quad, first I want to see the pivot point. Right now I have the quad selected, but I can't see the pivot point of this quad. So I'm going to click this this button right here where it says Pivot Tool or Control T. Now I can see the pivot tool right in the middle of this quad. And I want to move this pivot to the left edge because I want to scale this quad on the X axis to animate it in. Right now if I scale it, first of all I have the, cat, the, uh, the proportional set to X and Y. So as I move the X, the Y is also moving, and I don't want that. So if you remember, if you if you change the value in here, if you double click back inside, it'll revert back to what it was originally, right? So if I change this value, and I don't want to, and I want to go back to what it was, I just double click inside of there, and it'll revert back to that one. Now I'm going to set this guy to none because I don't want it to scale proportionally. I want to scale the X axis by itself. But like I said before, I want to move this pivot point over to the left so that when I scale it on the X, it scales in like that, okay? Now I just move the pivot point manually with my eye, and you can see that the pivot point now is on the minus 474.998. It's not, you know, it's not very exact. If you want to get the exact, you know, point, what you do is just go to the quad tab. You can see that the width of this quad is 950. So if you just basically take half of that, which is basically 475, if I put minus 475 exactly, now I know this pivot point is exactly at the leftmost edge of this quad. So if I set this scale x value to 0, my quad is basically invisible. It's, it's gone. It, it's too small to be seen. It's, it's, it's got a width of 0, so it's not there. And this is where I want this quad to start off with in the animation. So I can see at the bottom here on my timeline, I'm at frame 0. I'm going to press the key button here at the bottom. Or you can press Control K, and it'll bring up this set keyframe window. Now, this is where you can actually set a key, and you can see that everything here that in, that's in green is going to be having a keyframe on it. And I don't want to do that. I just want to animate the scale X. So press the position, the rotation, and the scale, which disables all that, makes it all red, and only press the X scale. This will create a keyframe only on the X scale. So we're going to go set and close and the window is going to close. We're going to move the time slider over to say frame 30. We'll change the scale back to 1 so that we can see it. We'll press the key button or control K and press set and close one more time. And now you can see that we have two vertical lines here at 0 and at frame 30 which represents your keyframe. And you could scrub through it and see what your animation is looking starting to look like. Now let's start animating the text Let's go to, say, frame uh, 25, and we'll start animating the headline on with a fade, alpha fade. Now, in the object manager, we have the alpha in the first column. By default, everything's 100, so let's take the headline alpha and put that to 0 on frame 25. Make sure you're on 20, 25 or so, and we'll set a keyframe, but only on the alpha. So I'm going to enable the alpha and disable the X scale from which it remembers from before, and I'm going to say set and close. I'll move the time slider over to, say, frame 45. I'll change the value of the headline alpha to 100. And I'll press the key button again and set and close. And now if you scrub through the bottom, you can start seeing your animation starting to come alive. 
Now we're going to animate the subline text, but instead of animating like we just did, let's learn a new tool here about copy and pasting animation keyframes. All right. Now in order to do that, we're going to need another window called the key graph editor, which you can get by going to the animation key graph editor, and you get this new window here. Now, this window at the bottom left in the objects window lists all the objects that are presently in the scene. All the ones that are animated are bold and it moves to the top. So you can see that my background quad is animated with the X scale and my headline is animated with the alpha. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click the alpha and select copy and I'm going to deselect it from the objects window. I'm going to select the subline so the subline moves to the top in the channels window I'm going to right-click the subline text, or you can actually right-click the alpha, since it's only one channel that you're going to be pasting, and select Paste. So we just copied the frames from the headline to the subline. And now if you to go to the bottom and scrub through it, you'll see that the subline comes on the exact same time as the headline. Now let's go back into the key graph editor and change when the subline animation happens. So with the subline channel selected in the channels window, using the middle mouse button over on the keyframe window side here, let's sh make a bounding box around both keyframes. Now, pressing down Control and Shift at the exact same time, collect one of the keyframes and move to the right. You can also use the middle mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. Now, if you scrub through, you can see that the subline happens a little bit after the headline, which is the effect I was going for. Now let's close this window and execute this graphic in the sequencer. I'll drag the graphic into the sequencer, double click on where the empty state is, and you can see the animation. I just want to show you um, something that you, you really need to be aware of. Uh, when we made this lower third, okay, Go inside this group of the lower third. I have my background here, which is obviously, obviously that red gradient. And you can see that this is on the Z um, axis on zero. Also, my text is on zero. Both of them are on zero. So all these objects are basically taking up the exact same space in 3D. And you got to remember that this is a 3D environment. Uh, you may not see it here now. You can still see the text proper and the background properly. But once you start rotating this object, see those artifacts that's happening there? That's because these objects are, are you know, operating on the same, same layer, if you will, the same space in 3D. So one way to rectify that is just to make sure that your, your objects are on a different uh, space on the Z. So if I were to take my background, for instance, right, this, this back gradient here, and just move it back one pixel on the Z axis, then if I rotate this group again, you see that I don't get that problem. There's no issues with the output. So very important to, um, when you're creating your graphics, not to uh, have objects that are taking up the same space on the same layer. Now, I only had to move my background quad because my headline and subline are different. They're, they're on the same Z0 there, but it's on a different Y, so it's not taking up the same space. That's why I only had to move my background quad to the minus 1 on the Z.